So welcome back to AI Insights and Innovation, where we talk about the realities of AI, including generative AI and agentic AI, and how to make all this stuff work for your enterprise. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek. Let's start the conversation. So what we're going to do here is kind of uh, get into the meat of uh, the challenges that enterprises are facing with their data as they transition to generative AI systems, or any AI, AI systems for that matter. It can be agentic, traditional AI, deep learning, machine learning systems. And really, we're looking at where they are now, are they as is state, where they're looking to be or where they need to be in order for them to make AI work. And, uh, and the delta between the two, and, and the fact of the matter is that many enterprises are, have a huge chasm between where their data is now and where their data needs to be in order for them to build these AI systems, specifically the generative AI systems that everybody wants to build right now. So we're gonna look at some of the issues there. And th there's a lots of survey data out there you can Google away for it. I do uh, reference an article I wrote in InfoWorld, which references a survey from the Enterprise Strategy Group. They report that 800, through by uh, surveying 800 IT decision makers revealed that more than uh, three in five organizations have notable gaps in the AI readiness, particularly in infrastructure and data ecosystem. And this is something I'm seeing as well. Um, one of the things I do when I teach my uh, generative AI architecture class is kind of get into the realities of what it takes to design and build one of these systems. These, at the end of the day, these aren't AI engineering issues. Those are the easier problems to solve, but you're dealing with data issues first and foremost, and getting around some of the limitations of the data that you need to use as training data to make these AI systems work is the largest challenge that I see facing us in the next five years as we're trying to move to AI. So what's occurring now is CIOs are tasked by the boards of directors and CEOs to you know build these strategic AI systems that are going to bring this uh, additional value to the company. And I understand why they're doing it because you know everything is uh, AI these days around the hype. The problem is certainly companies have been around for many, many years is that they have legacy data stores. They have huge data complexity problems. They have huge data silo problems and moving to AI or leveraging that data for training data uh, to train their AI systems to know what they need to know to carry out the processing that they want them to carry out is not going to be an easy putt. It's going to be a very hard task to do. So they have to overcome something that's a very ugly problem to get to the promise and reality of what uh, AI is promised to bring them. And that's, the, that's, that's it in a nutshell. So enterprises face several core challenges related to data when transitioning to AI systems. Uh, and the specific to generative AI, because obviously... Many enterprises are looking to build uh, large language models and small language models are going to use a massive amount of data. So in some cases, lots of data that almost all the data that exists within their enterprise. So they're trying to make use of their inventory data, logistics data, their sales data, uh, their marketing data, all these sorts of things that can be brought to bear inside a AI system, specifically a generative AI system, which will get them to a level of value. They're able to make core decisions based on analysis of the data that they can't see. In other words, it's trying to see the forest through the trees, the ability to look at this data complexity and abstract it down into something that the uh, stakeholders can take actions on in other, and even automate those systems by embedding those decisions, embedding that knowledge you know, back into the core business processing. So there's a lot at stake here. You, you think about this, businesses that are able to pull this off, your ability to get to an event-driven state where all of the core decisions and all the core processes, whether it's inventory control, sales order automation, you know, the, all the, the processes that make businesses work can function with almost perfect information. In other words, a complete understanding of who the customer is, a complete understanding of the product that they're selling, a complete understanding of the logistics system that they're leveraging, the transportation system they're leveraging, and optimize those things uh, in real time, continuously improve them in the domain of the AI system, that's huge. Uh, we're going to see companies are able to produce things faster, produce things in better quality, provide a, a much better customer experience, uh, ship things to you extremely quickly, and the ability to monitor and manage all these things through this, this automated infrastructure 
which is driven by the AI system. So that's the goal here. And I think everybody understands that. We've talked about that enough. And by the way, that's nothing new. We've been talking about this, uh, you know, for the last 30 years, with the event-driven enterprise, you know, data integration, uh, you know, all these sorts of things. Now we have an opportunity to use technology that really truly is able to change the game. But enterprises have an obstacle in front of them that they have to figure out how to get around. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. So the challenges enterprise face include siloed data. Uh, data often exists in isolated silos across organizations and typically owned by different uh, groups. That seems to be more of a problem than the technology fragmentation and the inability to get these data silos to talk. Um, is getting around the political infrastructure uh, within these organizations because some data is owned by marketing, some data is owned by logistics, some data is owned by inventory control, some data is owned by manufacturing. And they're run by different people in different departments, sometimes different profit centers. And people don't want to share their toys. They're not exchanging information well across these silos. And in order for these AI systems to have a complete understanding of what the business is, those silos have to get broken down. So the silo data has to go. We have to figure out some way to put abstraction layers on top of them, integration layers, so we can read all the data that we need in a timely manner to train these AI systems to do what these AI systems need to do. Second would be poor data hygiene. Uh, companies suffer from bad data hygiene, and this is a huge issue as well. Uh, the inaccuracy of the data, the reliability of data um, within many of these organizations, even key data that they live upon, inventory control, sales order entry, customer information, things like that, may not be of a good and accurate state, and I'm finding this a ton. Uh, so they haven't fixed it, and so much so that even the employees and the companies don't rely on the data each and every time, and the customers who are using the data or consuming the data through websites or mobile applications you know, may be finding the same thing. Well, that's a problem unto itself, but if you feed that erroneous data, that poor hygienic data into AI systems and it's training from the systems, you're just going to get bad knowledge that pops out of the data because unless you have accurate and reliable data, the AI system isn't able to be trained to train itself to take it to a level of understanding where it's going to be of use to. So, you know, I always say, you know, bad data in, bad data out. It's been a, it's been a mantra for, you know, as soon as uh, I started my career, garbage in, garbage out. And this is no different. Now you put uh, crappy data in, you're into your training data, you're going to get a crappy knowledge engine that's going to provide no value. And by the way, these things are going to be hugely expensive to build and operate. So without that value coming back from utilization of that training data, uh, you're going to be uh, in a bit of a, uh, in a bit of a lurch. So the next would be lack of semantic understanding. Uh, and this is a big one. Certainly, I saw this in the integration days. And if you read my EAI book back there, and that's like 30 years old now, uh, talked about having a semantic understanding of the data within the enterprise so we can create the integration flows between the source and target systems. And this kind of is no different. So companies frequently lack a common semantic understanding of what their data is. And this is easy to prove. You know, go into uh, a room of... Um, uh, you know, uh, data managers for large enterprises and, you know, ask them to raise their hand if they have a single source of truth for customer, a single source of truth for product, or single source of truth for anything else that should be important to them. And if, and if they're honest with you, uh, their hands aren't going to go up because they don't have a single source of truth. The data's all over the place, has different meanings. We don't have a common metadata layer. All these things don't exist that are going to be table stakes to make these AI systems work in terms of your ability to leverage these data sets as training data. So the next category of a problem would be technical debt and architecture. Technical debt basically is enterprises kicking the can down the road and doing so on purpose. So in other words, they put in a net new system that they felt they needed that could be an ERP system, it could be a, a business analytics system, what have you. And they understood that they're going to have to loop back and fix the data integration problem, fix the data hygiene problem, fix the data uh, semantic problem, but never do that. And so the technical debt remains and it becomes more technical debt as time goes on. So scattered data storage, inefficient processing. And so the debt complicates the efforts to implement all these AI systems because we have to solve these issues first. 
they're normally going to be very expensive to solve. That's why they were kicked down the road. Um, so the enterprise is going to have to invest in that. And that's a tough investment to get. You have to look at the stakeholders and people who are going to fund those projects and let them know that we're really not going to get any immediate value out of fixing these systems, removing this technical debt, but we will get to the AI value later on down the line. So in other words, we have to spend a tranche of money to get to spending another tranche of money to actually get to the state where we need to be. Need for transform, uh, transform data architecture. We need data architects here to transform the data that integrates various data sources into a coherent and unified system. You know, I always talked about, you know, back in the EAI days in the 90, you know, having the uh, enterprise data model, the unified enterprise data model, having a semantic understanding of every piece of information that exists in, in, uh, in an enterprise. Never got any close to that. In fact, it's gotten worse. So someone's going to have to take the helm. Uh, normally, that's going to be chief data officer working for the CIO, uh, maybe a special project that the CTO is going to take on to look how bad the information is and take steps to repair it and take steps to redesign the system, take steps to look at you know, core enabling technology, data abstraction technology, uh, cloud-based, cloud-based data systems, you know, all these things that are available to us now that may have the ability to make things better. Now, one of the things I'm going to warn you, people have a tendency to throw money and tools at this. That's almost never going to be successful. You have to have the ability to deal with this as a transformative problem, and you're going to need to hire some talented people, and you're going to need to take some time to fix it. And I think it's going to be worth fixing it, because eventually you're going to have to fix this you know, one way or the other. Um, I don't think we can kick the ball down the road anymore now that we have all these value systems in front of us. And indeed, I think we're going to see a lot of enterprises that are going to kind of fall by the wayside because they're unable to leverage your data for AI and other purposes because they have a data problem uh, that they can't, couldn't get around or couldn't afford to get around or unwilling to get around, which means they're unable to get to the more advanced data systems, things like AI, generative AI, agentic AI, and they can't take advantage of these things in the marketplace. And I think their competitors, many of them will be able to take advantage of them, certainly the younger players that may not have as much of a data problem, and they'll eat their lunch in the marketplace. And we're gonna see a lot of that occur over the next five years. And I'll tell you about that here. So other things to consider would be strategic use of data, uh, available data sets. The enterprises don't often have a, have uh, access to a limited number of data sets that uh, are significantly needed. Uh, so in other words, they can't get the, at the data they need. Maybe the data wasn't stored. Uh, you see that a great deal where uh, we're not tracking the data and therefore the data is missing. You can't go back and recreate that data. It's, it's, those events are gone forever if you're not recording data about them. So lack of data could be a uh, concern uh, for many enterprises. Security, or de- again, we're dealing with data complexity. Complexity leads to vulnerabilities because if we have a heterogeneous stack of data running on the mainframe, running in private clouds, running in public clouds, running on uh, cores, uh, running on edge computing systems, running on mobile systems, all well and good. I understand we're stepping up to solve tactical issues. That complexity actually causes a security issue because if we have the data scattered everywhere, we have to think about how we're going to secure it, how we're going to encrypt it, how we're going to track it. And the complexity of data just makes vulnerability and risk go up higher. It certainly makes the cost of securing those systems much higher. I I don't think that means we steer away from heterogeneating and uh, can avoid complexity, but certainly we can think about uh, better techniques uh, that to go off and mediate that complexity. And I talked a lot six years ago in terms of the uh, rise of multi-cloud where you're dealing with cloud complexity management or complexity mediation, your ability to look at platforms and data and processes and then put them into a, a, um, a configurable domain, in essence, put volatility into a domain. And that's an easy way to look at some very hard work that needs to occur within these enterprises. Small versus large models. Uh, everybody wants to build large models. And as I mentioned here before, uh, all enterprises do not need to be, build LLMs. They're hugely expensive to build. They're going to take a huge amount of data. And I think most of the AI applications, that are in, uh, either agentic or generative or traditional M- machine learning, are going to be um, tactical uses of AI. Uh, so in other words, it's going to be inventory control. It's going to be sales order entry systems. 
that are based on AI, but they're not solving these huge problems within the enterprise. They're solving very tactical problems. And these are things we can normally build within three to six months. And that's kind of a doable domain. Uh, normally, it doesn't take a lot of money to get there. These things don't cost a lot to operate. They don't necessarily need GPUs you know, or big honking uh, processors to do the inference processing, things like that. So I think your ability to think a bit smaller and a bit leaner in terms of how you're going to leverage AI will go to making AI more successful to you. And I think in doing that... Um, we're going to find we're able to take small uh, small domains of data and not necessarily the holistic data, which is the whole lot of the enterprise. It's going to be a, a very hard, if not impossible, to do. And I think that a lot of success is going to be driven within enterprises and building these tactical systems and using these smaller data sets. So where do we go from here? Is it is it is all hope lost? Uh, no, it, it can be solved. Um, it's going to take some spending. It's going to take some strategic thinking uh, by the leaders in the enterprises. And I think you have to have folks who kind of think out of the box in terms of how you're going to make this work, your ability to get the talent you need. You may not be able to do this uh, with the people existing in your organization. You're going to need data architects, data scientists, uh, middleware engineers, um, cloud engineers, you know, AI engineers. All the smart people that are able to look at where your as is state is, figure out where your to be state needs to be in terms of your data, and map a path to get there. I'm sure you, you may not like that path because it's going to be very expensive and it's going to be very long, but I don't think you have an option. Uh, you're going to have to solve the data problem in order to get to the value of other systems inclusive of AI, and so it's not optional. It's something you're going to have to do. So architectural decisions, strategic decisions, and address the challenges. You know, that's what it is at the end of the day. And by the way, this is nothing new. We've been talking about data issues uh, for years. And certainly, you know, as new technology starts to come in there, the data issue starts to raise its head a bit more. The difference is AI is a different beast, a different animal. It's completely dependent on data. Uh, it's not cloud computing. We're just moving a uh, dysfunctional data set from on-premises into the cloud, and we're just transferring a problem, not necessarily solving it. But this is the point where we're going to be unable to build these AI systems unless the data problem solved. So this is something that uh, is not optional. Inter enterprises are going to have to do it. So best of luck. So that's all I have for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, also, uh, check out uh, check out my work on the Cube Research. We're doing a lot of great stuff out there. Check out my colleagues, their podcast, uh, their YouTube channels. Uh, certainly, lots of great analysis, and I love their analysis because they're not just spouting off opinions. They actually have data to back up the opinions, which is important. So, until next time, you guys stay safe. Cheers. Bye.